Hi, I'm Jeff. This is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. So today's video has come from some of the comments about video length. I've not really brought this up before, but over the past 12 months being a YouTuber, uh, I've had several people comment on video length and I'll get into it in a while. But I thought it would be a little bit of a change in format and also a change in topic just to see if we can answer the question, how long should my greenhouse videos actually be? So let's get into it. And we are in. So as I say, this is going to be a slightly different format to usual. So I am going to kind of point at things and talk at the same time. And I will try and keep it relatively short. Um, but as I say, I, I won't get into detail just yet on that. Let's just talk about how this came to be. So how long should my greenhouse videos be? That's the question that I'm going to try and answer today. So it's a bit of a debate, isn't it, over video length. And I guess everybody has a slightly different take on it and a slightly different opinion on it. So what I thought I'd do, I thought I'd try and put some structure into it and give you a flavour of, first of all, those arguments put to me in favour of shorter video, video lengths or shorter videos, YouTube videos. And then I would talk about some ideas in favour of the longer videos, which I have to say nobody's actually given me any ideas in favour of long, longer videos, but I'm going to put the case forward for, well, you'll see anyway, and then I'll tell you my, my own opinion on, on the matter, and hopefully you can jump in and tell me your opinion on the matter too. So how did this came about? Well, over the last 12 months, I've had various comments along the lines of video length and talking to me about my own video length and just in general YouTube general videos and some of those have been other YouTubers and some of them have been people who either subscribe or don't subscribe or just clearly watch the videos and some of those have been very respectful some of those those have been less than respectful have I actually had somebody who said something along the lines of cut the waffle and get to the point which that's fine if that's their opinion on it I have to say if people are unrespectful or disrespectful then they get banned now I don't know if people who are non youtubers are aware of this but it's very easy for a channel owner to simply prevent another commenter from commenting so that that comment gets deleted and that person does not get to comment on those videos or on that channel anymore it's really easy to do and i've probably done it about half a dozen times in the last 12 months so having said that i did have a recent uh, back and forth with somebody who uh, was a subscriber i don't know if they still are but they were a subscriber it's very recent and it was really respectful and it was it was quite an enjoyable little back and forth and uh, you know we agreed on some things and we disagreed on others which is absolutely fine i'm, I'm fine with that I'm, i've I think comments is a great place for debate and for argument and providing it's done in a respectful manner, you know, what's what's the problem? There isn't one as far as I'm concerned because we can all learn from each other. And of course, we all need to respect each other's different opinions. So this is how that came about. So if I give you a little rundown on uh, some of those arguments in favour of the shorter videos just to kind of set the scene. So... Uh, one of the things that people said was that people get bored easily, that people who watch videos on YouTube have better things to do. Somebody said that there is kind of like a sweet spot between, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. Uh, others have said that even shorter than that is, is a better video length for people who watch videos on YouTube. And I, and I totally understand all those. All those are perfectly valid points. And as a, as a YouTuber and a viewer myself, I totally get all that. Um, I would say that there is also this thing, and, and again, probably only really familiar to other YouTubers, where there's this like sub for sub thing that goes on, where somebody comes and subscribes to your channel with the expectation, and sometimes they actually ask for it, that you sub subscribe back to their channel. And really, that I don't really see that that benefits anybody, if I'm honest. I, it's great to support each other. Yes, I understand that. Um, but what you don't want to get into, or what I certainly didn't want to get into, was watching somebody's channel just, just purely because they subscribed to mine. 
that really isn't scalable, is it? It's not something that you could continue doing throughout your YouTube creator's career. If I'm doing career in inverted commas here. So you can imagine it, you know, I've been, a, I've been a YouTuber for just over a year now and I've had lots and lots of people who have either directly asked for that kind of arrangement or have done it in a, a slightly more subtle way. You know, they might have subscribed to mine and they, they said something like, hey, I've subscribed to your channel. I too have a channel. Why don't you take a look? That kind of thing. Um, and yeah, I understand people want subscribers, but really the way to grow a YouTube channel, and I'm not speaking here as somebody who's done a fantastic job of it so far, or somebody who's, uh, clearly, I mean, clearly I'm not a, a big YouTuber, uh, but I really don't believe, and I'm sure a lot of the, the bigger YouTubers will tell you the same thing, that doing a sub for sub is going to make you into uh, a very well-known or well-subscribed to YouTube YouTuber. You can imagine having hundreds, if not thousands of YouTubers doing, trying to do a sub for sub with you. And then you then, if you watch a video, then you feel like you've got to watch it through loyalty. You could literally spend all day and all night trying to catch up with everybody's videos. So I don't do that. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit uh, at the end of this, what I do actually do with people who subscribe to my channel, channel who are also YouTubers. And I'll tell you how I how I go about that. So we've said already in favour of shorter videos, people do get bored, better things to do. We've said what the sweet spot is or what they think the sweet spot is. And we've also talked about people telling me to cut the waffle and get to the point, which I have something to say about in a little while. So in favour of longer videos. So most of these are my own. This is my idea of why longer videos may be the way to go. Now I am not talking here about longer in terms of a specific video length. What I'm talking about here is making videos that cover something that answers a question. So that might be something specific that actually, when it comes down to it, is covered in total depth in five minutes. Okay, so for me, that might be a longer video. Somebody might cover that in one minute flat, but not do a very good job of it and not really answer everybody's questions. Now that for me isn't the way to go about it. I would say you're better making a longer one and actually covering it properly. So in terms of what I mean by longer videos, I mean covering it properly. I mean talking about nuance because the older you get, the more you realize that anything in the world whatever the subject is, but in particular, we're talking about plants here. There is no cut and dried, quick fire, sound bite answer to anything. If people say to me, well, okay, I've got an orchid here. What, what media should I put it in? Well, the, the answer invariably is it depends. There is no cut and dried answer. And again, that gives you the perfect opportunity to go through your thought processes in a video and explain all the ins and outs of it. What you would do in this situation, what you would do in that situation, where you're going to put it, because obviously in a greenhouse you've got various microclimates. It could be different moving it six inches to the left. The amount of sun that it gets might be different. The temperature it gets might be different. The amount of moisture that it gets might be different. There is no cut and dried answer. So for many topics, I found that the longer video, longer as in I can thoroughly explain my thought process, and if I've thoroughly explained them, then that's as long as the video needs to be. There is no specific length. I don't actually make a video and think, right, I'm going to make it 10 minutes long and then I'm going to stop no matter where I am. I make it depending on if I've got something to say. And if I've got something more to say about it, then I will say it. I don't see it as waffle. Many people might do. That's fine. They have a choice. This is YouTube. You can unsubscribe or you can not watch. And there's something else that we also have that some people might not be aware of and they're called chapters. I always, apart from shorts, which I'll talk about in a second, I always put chapters in all my videos. So if you look to the description, and obviously this is for people who don't know what chapters are, if you look in the description, you'll see a little section called chapters where I timestamp all the different things that I cover 
in a video. So that means that anybody who is short on time or is only interested in a specific aspect of that video, they can go to the description, click on the timestamp and they can go straight to where they need to go. Now for me as a YouTuber that actually hurts my watch time and that reduces any income I get from YouTube but I don't do it for that in this particular case I do it because I know it helps people and I don't particularly want to irritate them by talking about something that they're not interested in so I give them that option to go to exactly where they want to go okay so some other ideas about in favor of videos being as long as they need to be if you are really interested in something then you will want to know all the ins and outs and the in-depth nuance about something. So, for example, my last video, I think, was all about the Oncidium Twinkle and the spots on the leaves. Now, if you have an Oncidium Twinkle, uh, you've looked it up on YouTube, you've found that particular video, and it seems to cover your exact specific question, because you have one, and it also has spots on its leaves then you're likely to want to know all the ins and outs about it. You're not going to just want some quick 30 second soundbite that doesn't really cover or answer the question. You're going to want to know in detail all about how you can solve that problem. Now, if you have that problem, I don't think video length is going to be an issue for you. I think you're going to want to know everything to do with that particular problem. Yes, of course, there are times when we want to do it really quickly, but if there is a quick answer, then fine, I'll make a video that will give a quick answer. But as I say, with plants, that really is the case. There are ifs and buts and maybes. Um, those are the things that we need to consider when we're talking about growing plants. There is not just one short, definite, quick answer that can be done in a quick couple of minute video. As a YouTuber, of course, the longer the videos and the more that people actually spend time watching those videos, then the more money you're going to make. Now, I know as a viewer that doesn't interest you one little bit, but it's something to consider for those of us who are trying to make some kind of money. Now, in my case, I'm just trying to cover costs and I'm still a long way off covering costs but I wouldn't presume to pass judgment on what people's goals are. Some people just make YouTube videos for fun. Some people make them to learn themselves. I actually do both. I do, I do it for fun and I also do to learn myself. But I do do it to try and cover my greenhouse costs. That would be great if I can actually cover the costs of heating this place, cover the costs of replacing the plants that I kill, then I would consider that fairly successful. That would be great for me. If I can actually extend that even more and, and make some kind of profit on it, then even better. Why not? You know, we all have to make money somehow. And when you're self-employed like I am, uh, any income stream is, is definitely welcome. I just wonder if people would go and watch like an Oscar winning film. So I say something like, oh, I can't remember what it's called, something like Schindler's List. Remember Schindler's List? quite a few years old now I think it was all filmed in black and white and it was about three or four hours long and it won all sorts of awards and I went and watched it at the pictures and I must admit I was a little bit skeptical because I didn't really particularly want to see something in black and white and the thought of sitting there for three or four hours uh, didn't exactly fill me with joy however I absolutely loved it I thought it was a brilliant film and uh, not at one point after the film did I think that would have been even better if they'd reduced it to 10 minutes it was as long as it needed to be. That was just fine. That was just right. I was entertained. Now, obviously, I'm not making Schindler's List here. But what I'm aiming to do is for the vast majority of my videos anyway, are not vlog style videos. I do the odd vlog one. But the vast majority of them are to answer questions and to try and create some kind of value for people so that they find me on YouTube. Of course, I want them to subscribe. Of course, I want them to watch other videos that I've made. But I'm hoping that I answer the question that they were after in the first place. So if you're not already clear on what my opinion is by now, um, just to kind of summarise it, for me, how long should my greenhouse videos be? Well, for me, it depends on the content. I don't even think about video length. These new hashtag shorts that YouTube is currently experimenting with, and I'm also currently experimenting with, 
should really satisfy some of those people with perhaps uh, lower attention spans or those people who are after like a quick hit for something. Like for example, I did one on cyclamen watering. Now that was something I could do. It was one of those rare occasions where it was quite easy to say, this is what you should do in terms of watering your cyclamen. Now, of course, even with that, there is nuance. There is definitely, and it depends there. But I was able to come up with some kind of general statement anyway, and that did really well. That had, I think it had nearly 3,000 views, which is a good one for me. You know, my, my average uh, view account for videos is, tends only to be somewhere between, I don't know, two to 300. It's not a lot. Um, obviously it grows over time and I have got many videos that have got many more views than that but on average we're talking about so yeah shorts cover those but I would say that for most people if the title is something that you're interested in and you don't particularly want to watch the whole thing then by all means go and have a look at the chapters and find which section that you're interested in if the title doesn't interest you then don't watch it and that's what i do so i was telling you a little bit about what i do with those the people that i subscribe to well i purely purely and solely watch their videos dependent on whether the topic interests me if it's a title that interests me and there's something that answers a question that i'm after or it's something that i'm interested in then of course i will watch the video or i might just go to certain sections of the video sometimes i skip that's perfectly fine i'm sure people do that with mine as i said uh, I think on my last video that in general, like as an average, most people tend to watch about 50% of my videos. Now, that's fine if that's all they want to watch. I'm perfectly okay with that. But it doesn't seem to matter how long the video is, they will watch 50% of it. So if I make a minute long video, they'll only watch 30 seconds of it. If I make a 30 minute video, then they'll watch 15 minutes of it. No idea why that kind of average comes across. But that seems to be what people do or what YouTube analytics tells me they do. And as I said earlier, I use chapters anyway. So if people don't want to watch the whole thing or there's just some little part of it that they're interested in, they can have a look in the description and they can click through to chapters. So that's the thing on how long should greenhouse videos be. That's my feelings at the moment, but I'm really interested to see what you think about that. So can you answer that question for me? Do you think it's cut and dried and I should have like a specific length? Or do you think things are a little bit more nuanced than that? And you take the same view as me that a video is or should be as long as it needs to be. And of course, as I said before, you can just click through to the chapters anyway if you don't want to watch the whole thing. And does everybody know that you can actually click on the settings and you can speed up a video. I very often speed it up to either 1.75 or even twice the speed uh, just to whiz through something if I need to. But again, it's dependent on the topic. If I'm really, really interested in it and I'm really learning a lot from it, then of course I'll just watch it at normal speed. Everybody is slightly different. There, are, As far as I'm concerned anyway, there is no right answer to this. This is purely down to your own opinion, your needs, your wants, what your goals are and what you actually click through to YouTube for in the first place. Okay, so over to you. What do you think? Please write in the comments there what you think. And I promise the next video we come to, I think we're going to do a greenhouse news next. So give me a thumbs up if you want a greenhouse news. And for now, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.